Okay, guys, it is time. Welcome to Constant Curiosity, the ballsy guide to creating social content. Um, I am John Burkhardt from TBC Global. We'll get more into who the heck I am in a little while, but we got a lot to cover. Uh, creating social content is crucial, and I am an absolute liar slash hypocrite if I didn't be honest with you and tell you that I am recording, creating real-time social content right now with my man Ben Rock. This guy right Hi, here. Yes, say hello to Ben. So uh, we're recording all this for you. You'll, you'll be able to see this. Thank you, Ben. Um, I'm going to try to be interesting, so um, I'll have this little hand signal if I'm saying something interesting, which I hopefully will be doing a lot. But before we get started, constant curiosity. You would think that uh, these are captain's armbands, but they actually stand for constant curiosity. So Ben, can you help me? Uh, we're just going to put these armbands on because we got a lot to cover, but I just want you to know I'm committed to you guys, uh, and we're going to talk fast. And I want you to be using your questions. If you got questions, let me know. Uh, send them to me in the chat. Um, you can't see this. Or I'll make it where you can see it. All right, let's get started. There you go. There's the C. We got a lot to cover, but I got to start with the problem. Okay. Uh, I know you haven't, some of you are having dinner and some of you are having lunch, but uh, the reality is in my intro, you basically have not even paid any attention to me because every internet minute in 2017, 990,000 of you are swiping right. For, for Tinder every minute. If we do the stats on the hundred and something of you that are uh, joining me in this uh, amazing ISD webinar, some of you have just gotten a date. Some of you, yep, that's right, have gone already and found your future love or and or uh, sort of temporary love. Uh, and I'm I think it's hard to keep attention. It's hard to get attention. You know, you look at 452,000 tweets sent. I want the outcome of our 59 minutes together that we have remaining. I don't want you to be like this. Like, this guy is in the New York subway, dude. He is in the New York subway and looking like a big idiot. Let's play that again. Let's just, let's see him swipe and right in the New York subway. Um, here we go. Having a little technical issue as we get to the right slide. There we go. Swipe, swipe, and the guy behind him is like, you big idiot. I don't want you to create social content that makes you look like this idiot. Because guess what? Your kids, if you got them, or whoever, do not ever wake up and say, Daddy, Daddy, read me some branded content, and that's the problem. I have been fighting this whole thing of, oh, we're a brand, and we need to be able to say whatever we want to say on our social channels because we are important. That is actually not true. Brands are not important. Social channels are made socially for people. Is that not right, Ben Rock? Yeah, that's true. Okay, thank you. Now, why am I able to even talk to you? So here's, here's the deal um, as I'm learning to use this clicker. Um, this, this is it. Uh, I've, got, I've got the clicker figured out, guys. Wonderful. Um, I've been doing this. I've been, I've been helping large audiences and small figure out the content marketing landscape. Uh, and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about a, a book of mine on real-time marketing when it comes up, when it's relevant. I want you to feel emotionally um, the feeling that you're crowd surfing over a crowd when we get done uh, and that you know exactly how you need to create content to get and keep attention. I know that there's no feeling like crowd surfing and I uh, happen to do it quite a lot at my keynote speeches. So I'm not going to crowd surf with you. We're going to get ballsy, and this is how it's going to be. Uh, it all started with this book. This book is called Newsjacking, the Urgent Genius of Real-Time Advertising. You can get the title there, Ben. Um, this book 
led to a very, very, very bad thing. This led to brands saying, hey, we're going to hop in on social conversations and we're going to shoehorn our brands. Look, try Aquajet bottled water. Uh, let's try to shoehorn that into the royal wedding, to hurricanes, whatever we can. Um, and it's not right. You got to earn that. We're going to talk about how you can earn the right to uh, enter normal people like you and me. I'm quasi normal, I guess. How you can, earn, how you as a brand can earn the right to be in that conversation. Speaking of which, as Ben Rock is recording this live, the behind the scenes, I want to know if you would be willing to tweet an Instagram and actually go and put some of these thoughts into action because I have got a London bus. It's the number one bestseller. You can only get it at Hamley's in London. Uh, I, Lego will be a massive part of this um, uh, of this webinar uh, because they're doing amazing stuff in social content, and you need to know about it. So if you if you're going to tweet an Instagram. Uh, those are the hashtags. My Twitter is at John Burkhart. My Instagram is at John Burkhart TBC or at TBC Global. And the hashtag is constant curiosity. And I would love for some folk to get something out of this, make some social content during the webinar or after. I will review everything. And I want to hear some stories about how your piquing people's constant curiosity, and I will send you this Lego bus. Okay, let's get back to, let's get to the business. You got all that, and this is, uh, this is, here we go. I have to say, I want all of you to take a step back for a sec. Think about what you're most passionate about. I think, you know, it is important for you to realize where this whole ballsy thing came from. I am obsessed with balls. I graduated from university and I moved straight to Chicago to work for the only company in America that makes you play soccer every day at lunch. That would be this company, the U.S. national team, U.S. Soccer Federation. Yes, hey. That's me uh, right before we... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's enough of that. That's me right before we beat England in the World Cup when I, I, I've been living in England for 18 years. And uh, I have put that passion, channeled it from soccer slash what I call football in England into helping brands, teams, and rights holders get and keep attention with this thing, which I'm so excited to talk to you about, which is called constant curiosity. I want to talk about these problems again. Not only have you stopped listening to me after four seconds because you were finding a date on Tinder, you got problems with brands hijacking whatever is trending. That's You can call my book as a, it's supposed to be the manual to get you to stop doing that and do that the proper way. But you, know, you can read on the screen, you know, people just talking about themselves not really considering the customer. And I, if you could take away one thing, I want you to take away, man, I'm going to really walk in the shoes of the people I'm going to try to reach. And even if that means having to go meet them in the pub, I will go and do that and talk to them like a real human being. Because the number one problem is creating engaging content. That is what everyone's saying. What is engaging? Well, we're going to talk about that. But I just want you to like get off your high horse for a second. because. You're thinking, we don't have the budgets that, that these guys have. Like, you know, yeah, these guys like sell happiness or whatever, but you've never had a million dollar budget. I am thirsty. And I am feeling happy now, thanks to Coca Cola. Um, so it's about this engaging content is about brains more than budget. Forget about your Coca Cola budgets. You ain't getting them. We are going to talk about what you could do about being scrappy. And I think I had to be scrappy from the very beginning because of you, because you, some of you read my book, maybe not you specifically, but some of you out there in the world read it and said, I'm going to start spamming the world. I'm going to start doing things for my brand because everyone deserves to hear from us. Well, I have taken it on the chin because of people doing these terrible hijacks, not newsjacks, 
hijacks of the news because they weren't founded on the principles we're going to discuss tonight, which are principles of questions, imagination, empathy, and trust, which is an acronym called QUIET, which we're going to get to because you need to shut up because brands don't belong there. And that's what you keep saying to brands, shut up, I'm trying to talk to my friends here leave me alone. So first we're going to talk about what not to do. Uh, that was me in Belgrade last week uh, getting slammed as the scapegoat for all the sins of real-time marketing. We're going to first talk about what not to do, but I, this is the time, Ben, that we get interactive, okay? You guys still with me? Cool. So we are going to get interactive. I'm going to magic these balls to 140 different locales uh, around the world where you guys are hopefully still with me. Uh, I'm going to magic them to you right now. Just close your eyes and they will appear. They're going to come out of the little green dot in your, uh, that little green dot there. They're going to come out of that green dot on your computer. So here we go, because I need you guys to vote with your balls. I think we're going to do blue and orange for this one. I'm going to present some ideas to you that you could only call social content so misguided and wrong that it changed the world and made it a terrible place. We're going to have three rounds. You're going to vote with your balls which ones you think are the worst. We're going to diagnose the problem and then we're going to get to the solutions of how we together with hopefully you're going to take the um, masters in internet business class from this amazing place which I'm right here on oh, complete spin. I'm here at ISD HQ, baby, and it is looking good. Brand new digs downstairs. Come and visit us in Madrid. But we are going to get ballsy. You're going to, I'm going to get your opinion. You can, we're going to have a Q&A after I'm sick of hearing myself speak, uh, and I'm going to be answering questions. And we might zip through some slides so we can just get to more Q&A because I am here for you. If you got questions, throw a ball at me. If you can't throw a ball at me, just chat with me on the little thing there questions, it's a little question tab, in fact I might click that question tab to see if anyone's got a question like I can't understand your accent or anything weird. Um, okay, we got Olaz, Noah Scucho, El Audio, so Susanna, Susanna, I'm sorry that it looks like you're not listening to the audio, uh, I, I took three years of Spanish so I'm doing my best. Um, hola, someone said hello, cool. All right, keep those coming in. I will do my best uh, to respond, but we need to get to the first ever live webinar for the MIB, the brand balls up battle. Here goes nothing. Ben Rock, are you ready for this? Yes. Okay, it's gonna be dangerous. Hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, sorry. Drop my balls. Okay, here we go. So round one for you guys following along at home. I need you to um, I, I need you to listen. Uh, I'm going to pitch you the New York Police Department versus Fox News. And I, I, I know this is quite uh, American in its in its outlook, but uh, we got other European examples coming. So I'm just trying to please everyone. Therefore, probably pleasing no one. Okay, so here we go. I am so excited because. This is the idea. I'm a New York Police Department community manager. I just started my job and I get this great idea and I go tell my boss, hey Ben Rock, like I got this great idea man. Why don't we get people, everyone loves taking a picture with a New York cop. Why don't we get people with the hashtag MyNYPD to tag themselves and get a picture with a cop. Brilliant idea. It will go viral. Well, that's exactly what happened because guess what, sports fans? Yep, that led to the largest online gallery of police brutality, like from Cocky McSwags a lot. You might not have known this, but the NYPD can help you with that kink in your neck as the guy's knee goes through the guy's sternum. Not a great PR move, and this led to similar hashtags, my, my Seattle, my Miami, my ever, and again, massive gallery of police brutality, not what the brand wanted. So next 
uh, think about that because I want you to vote with your blue ball if you think that's worse than Fox News because Fox News, I know you watch that show or have in the past, uh, that would be Breaking Bad. They looked at a hot episode of Breaking Bad and said, oh my goodness, Let's newsjack, let's shoehorn our agenda of Fox 29 Philly because six people had been shot in Southwest Philly. So let's, let's, we got, hey, we can do shooting. Shooting happens on Breaking Bad. Let's shoehorn that in to make sure that our news segment is more popular. Mm, people are getting shot there. Not sure, Ben Rock, that that was a good idea. Uh, and I would love to get your opinions crazy. Uh, so again, vote with your balls. I'm going to go on and vote for you because I'm, I, I can't really see you. And I would go on and say, based on popularity and the fact that it went viral and happened to stretch to Seattle and Miami and other cities, that the New York Police Department bit of social content was uh, was the biggest balls up of the uh, of those two. Uh, disagree with me in the comments or the tweets and the Instagrams, which I cannot see currently, but I'll check after the show. So, next round is really exciting because the next round is I know you're sitting comfortable. It might be lunchtime, it might be dinner, but I want you to look down at your feet, and I want you to tell me. Do you see plastic shoes with holes in them? I hope the answer is no because you are a fashion risk to humanity. Crocs are a crime against humanity and I want you to decide whether their social content or Pepsi Max is the worst balls up. Let's get to it. We don't have much time. So here we go. And breathe. Nice. All right. Crocs found out that David Bowie was dying, yeah? So they said, hey, Ben Rock, um, you're going to be like the boss, the okay. client for everyone because I like having someone to talk to. Um, what we're going to do, Ben Rock, is we're going to make a commemorative shoe and we're going to put the lightning bolt on it and we're going to try to sell more of these plastic gardening shoes. Um, and we're going to do that to hijack the death of a musical legend, David Bowie. Um, think a little bit about that. Uh, again, that was blue. Now, this could be close to home uh, for some of you, but my next one is Pepsi Max. I want you guys to tell me, um, uh, I would love one, one comment um, to identify who this is. This is a voodoo doll on, the tr on a train track. Uh, anyone have a clue who this voodoo doll is? Okay, we don't have time for the, uh, for your answers, but it is Ronaldo, Cristiano Ronaldo. Pepsi Max Sweden, they were, Portugal was in town playing Sweden. They thought it would be nice to have a, a voodoo doll of Ronaldo run over by a high-speed train. Uh, so your options for biggest balls up of the year are Crocs, which may have been invented in a Scandinavian country, I don't want to place blame, um, and Pepsi Max Sweden. So we have a little uh, Scandinavian balls up battle here. Think about it. We got to right these wrongs, uh, Crocs versus Pepsi Max. My vote for you, I'm going to go on out of the limb and say I hate the David Bowie thing and the fact that my newsjacking book helped usher in this celebrity death jacking thing, Ben Rock. But the reality is the Pepsi Max was just brutal. Like, I, 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 I mean, I like Barcelona more than I like Real Madrid, which I shouldn't say because I'm in a Madrid-based office. But uh, my son and I um, are fans of Messi. But I would not have done that to uh, Ronaldo. I, I think it's cruel and misguided. So that's my vote. Let's stay with Ronaldo while we're picking. Um, so let's have a little sports round. I do a lot of uh, webinars and keynote speeches and workshops in the world of sport with sports brands. Let's take CR7, Cristiano Ronaldo's personal brand, versus AC Milan. Um, this will turn some of you off because you don't care about football at all, so I'll do this quickly. Um, uh, Cristiano basically uh, has an underwear brand. Um, he said, okay, um, 
I've had some really, I've had a, it's been a real pleasure looking at your underwear photos. Thank you for participating in my boys' underwear competition. I, just to give him credit, I think this must have been lost in translation. I don't think he meant that, but at the same time, it was a balls up, but not as big, and I'm going to go on and reveal my orange ball, because it wasn't orange yet, wasn't as big as AC Milan doing the New Zealand haka, Yes, that's right, the New Zealand haka um, on the football pitch in an ad for Nivea, which fans were outraged that what does a, 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 a ritual from Ma the Maori people of New Zealand have to do with, uh, with uh, players, uh, Italian football players. So again, two big balls ups. I'm going voting for AC Milan on that one, and you can fight me if you want to. Um, and that's probably because you hate Ronaldo, and I understand that. Okay, so from the balls ups, from newsjacking, all the way to this brand spamming, I gotta teach you something here, because here's the problem. Ready, fire, aim sounds scary, but that is the strategy that all of these balls ups used. And I'm gonna go out on a limb and listen to me. Uh, I'm gonna go out on a limb and say, Wow, um, mm, you know what? We actually need Ready, Fire, Aim as our strategy for constant curiosity, and that hurts because we may make some decisions that were as bad as the six examples I've just shown you in our Balls Up game, but the reality is if we plan and think of every permutation, we can look like we're Ready, Fire, Aim when the reality is we planned in advance for all of this, we're just ready to roll whenever it happens. Like my man, Ben Rock here, he is ready to roll. He's moved behind me. I'm gonna whip around and do my spin move, and he's there. He's just on it. He, he, he knows I could throw the ball at his face all, all of a sudden, and he's still there recording. We gotta do this. Now, the problem with this is, I'm gonna show you the problem and the solution in four, count them, Four gifts. Here we go. These four gifts are as follows. Um, it's the constant curiosity journey, ladies and gentlemen, in four gifts. Now, you're sitting there on your couch or in your office, on your sofa, wherever you are in the world, and you're thinking about the day you've had. You're thinking, hmm, wait a second. Have I, a little Lego theme here, have I done anything today that's productive or was I waiting for client feedback? I feel like a lot of us end up spinning our wheels during the day. We're trying to use our imagination, have empathy, ask questions, and, and develop trust, but something is missing. I want to know what that missing ingredient is. Well, here's the thing. We can go on and put the blame. Let's put the blame on the organization. It's so easy to blame the organization. And here's the silos that a lot of companies have. And I think, you know, let's just have, let's just get all our silos, our marketing department, our operation department, our HR department, our, you know, PR department, let's get them talking uh, because the only way we're going to ever be able to create social content that that keeps the world being more constant and more curious is to knock these bad milk drinking silos down and watch them destroy themselves because we're going to have to start talking. Uh, and if we start talking, you're not going to believe this, while everyone is planning the special meeting we uh, and doing all the things that they're supposed to do, there's going to be this little rebellious little group of us off to the side just like this kid, no one has any idea that he's having more fun with anyone, experimenting with things. Basically, the mighty boulder that is, whatever that thing is in his hands, ripping through the army and the, and the dinosaurs. I want us to be that guy. His mom and sister are completely oblivious. Sometimes we need to be allowed to, to take those risks, uh, and we're going to get into some strategies about how. And if we do this, we can be like the twerking twins. We can twerk like the twins. Let's get a little twerking twin action. Ben Rock, can you get this in for real? 
Okay, that feels really awkward doing this over live webinar, so I'm going to stop that. Now, get, if you haven't listened to me at all, I want you to take away the following four things, and I'm going to start with questions. This is the quiet that I want you to think while you decide if you're going to do um, the Masters in Internet Business or you're already in it. I want you to think, am I... Inquisitive. Inquisitive. Am I the type of person that wants to ask questions and questions everything? Could I use questions, just starting with questions, and spot problems and get to the real problem quicker? I beg that if you're actually on an ISDE webinar, I actually think that you're a person who questions the status quo already. So I'm giving you that. I'm going to give you that. I'm, if you can keep score for me, in fact, I'm going to keep score right now. I'm going to go on and give you that. I'm going to click up some points for you there. I already think you've got the questions. I think you may be afraid to use them sometimes in the right settings. You might get in, uh, intimidated by the hippo, the highest paid person in the room which is normal, but I want us to start with questions and I'm going to give you some tools on how to do that. I'm fired up about this because we can start with questions and we can really find ways to get and keep attention of the people that we want uh, to love us. Um, but you know what? If we're keeping on with quiet, we got to go here and we got to get to the I, the very important I, which is imagination. Now this is it. Once we have this pool, Ben Rock, once we have this pool of questions, we need to think, can I connect new ideas to some of these questions? Let's filter out some of these questions based on new ideas and new possibilities to solve some of the problems that these questions represent. represent. So after we've asked the questions, we've got loads, then we narrow, narrow them down by using our imagination so we have a, a shorter number uh, a smaller number, I mind you, of, of, of questions and ones that we can connect new ideas to. And then the very crucial issue of empathy hits us like literally right there between the eyes. And that is, can we now go out into the world where real people are, not people with their marketing hats and stupid armbands, what we need to now do is connect emotionally with the people that we're trying to help. And this could be questions, this could be drinks and pubs, like I said, this could be a uh, survey monkey, um, this, this could be just, uh, just uh, desk research even, like sitting here typing it into Google and finding out, mom, I'm, one of my clients is related to uh, tuition and learning. Uh, and I just got some amazing, amazing uh, handle on what the real problems was and definitely push the empathy button by just going to mums net. There's some harsh stuff in there as well. Mums can be brutal, or not mums, but the people on mums net. Um, and then the final thing is once you've got the questions, once you've narrowed them down with the imagination, once you've connected with your people, it is time to build a team around this so the silos can go down and we can get to work. Now, if you can do this, I want us to track, quite, this would be tricky for me to remember so you remind me, I want us to track the journey of questions, imagination, empathy, and trust. Um, and I am just getting started. We've gone 26 minutes. Uh, again, if you've got any questions, let me know, but i got to give you a little primer in this whole evil, evil, evil subject of curiosity. Brene Brown, who has one of the best TED Talks um, ever, Googler, said, curiosity is a shit starter, and I'm like, ooh, you just swore, and that's like really got my attention, but the rock problem is when you check curiosity, some of the words when you type into the Google, some of the words are like idle, morbid, random. So curiosity stirs things up. And as she continues to say, sometimes we've got to rumble with a story to find the truth. I want us to rumble together. I want us to rumble together with some examples. And I want you to go away thinking, I'm going to take this course or I'm going to be more inquisitive in my current job, whatever it takes to rumble with some stories to find some truth. But you know what? Brene would tell you, you better start with the fact that the most dangerous phrase in the language that you speak is, we've always done it this way. And again, 
we're going to have if we're going to really embrace this ben rock we're going to have to uh put all of that outside the door um and say we're going to have to try things that haven't been done i know a lot of people won't go there especially people in the boardroom won't go there but to get attention hear me now in 2017 i'm sorry but you got to stand out above the crowd and do something that gets attention and then i'm going to hopefully help give you some ideas on how to keep that and one of the best ways to do that is to look inside yourself i want you to look inside yourself right now i'm sorry to get all touchy feely with you ben rock as we're recording this live but i want you out there uh to basically look at yourself and say is there anything that i feel is true that almost nobody agrees with me on and uh peter teal who's uh, been behind paypal and written an amazing book called in, uh, in zero to one he said this and google have ended up interviewing lots of people by asking this contrarian question i want you to think about that a lot of startups happen by them asking this contrarian question which leads to some real truths about something that you believe in and if you can find that for your clients something you really feel strongly about and prove to them that that's a basis to begin this question this constant curiosity journey that is a great place to start um so think about that um and then also want you to think about this four second thing now i'm really really you know i could take it personally um that people uh come on a webinar and then leave because they get you know they have to go run an errand or something else happens but i know my behavior on webinars and I, i'm not taking it personally because the reality is some of you checked in and did what you could while you could but then you got to go and i got to also be happy with the fact that while some of you have this massive fear of missing out there's also this joy of missing out and we have to reconcile to be constantly curious we can't always be on looking for what everyone else is doing we got to take some time to do some heavy thinking to pre-plan like we talked about the ready fire aim strategy and i want you to think of some creative ways to ask questions let's start with a little bit of uh, from one of my favorite players in the world messi I love this uh this installation that basically they said who is the best player in the world and it was basically just a way to get cigarette butts to go in the receptacle and not on the streets of uh of whether this was Barcelona or Madrid not sure could have been anywhere in the world because these are global amazing awesome players uh but let's let's I want you to think about some creative ways to ask people questions because not everyone wakes up in the morning thinking I want to go answer a load of questions we got to be creative on how we even gather these questions in the same way that this uh idea on the on my right says how do you feel today happy excited tender sad angry and scared um i actually am feeling in a combination i've got all my liquids here so i'm actually feeling hydrated which is not on there but i would i would say because i'm having a coke that i'm feeling happy because i bought into that whole thing and i'm sorry if any of you work for coke because um it is indeed sugar water okay so now bad questions let's talk about some bad questions uh here's an example of a bad question in the 90s uh Russia on po on popular TV they had a show where if you could evade the police for 35 minutes in a stolen car you got to keep the car now i can hear the question there the question there was man that's going to be a provocative thing we can really get people going well the reality is that's a bad question to ask cuz it led to an increase in car thefts in russia so that didn't last very long a good question is getting more specific to solve a specific problem where you know some you know you've done your research you got empathy you know what canadian uh 21 18 to 21 year old gap year students love when they travel around europe you know they love beer so you place as the canadian embassy you place yep that's right you place all of these uh beer fridges and the only way to open them is with a passport but i would gather and i would challenge you that i think a constant curiosity question is even bigger than that and it's the eighth grade teacher in north carolina who basically put 
machines, bike pedal machines under her student de students' desks, and it stopped them from fidgeting because they were actually doing something physical while they were learning. And that brings me to a little interlude, which I call our fidget spinner interlude. I wish I had a fidget spinner right here, right now, to fidget, but I don't know what question fidget spinners ever answered. You know, I just want to give you, because we've been going, uh, I only have 18 minutes left before we have questions. You know, the reality is when we, uh, when we look at these, uh, these dogs, and they, uh, I'm going to see these animals behind. We've got a little um, spinning wheel of death. There's a cat with a fidget spinner. Yep. There's a dog with a fidget, fidget spinner. We're having a little technical issues because of these. I'm overloading my gifts. Which ones, which ones do you like? I dare you to crack this nut. What question did the fidget spinner answer? I would say not a single one, uh, even though they are strangely addictive. Uh, that was my fidget spinner interlude, and the last little interlude um, as we've reached halftime is the lizard with the fidget spinners. Ah, beautiful. Um, if, if I only get a little bit of feedback from you, you'll tell me that you liked the lizard better than the dog and cat, and that's fine. Now, let's get to some practical tools. I am so excited to teach you about the question analyzer. Yep, that's right. Question analyzer is from BuzzSumo, who just merged with Brandwatch. I challenge you to go to BuzzSumo after we're done and use that tool because you will love it. it uh, type in any question and it uses uh, Quora, um, Yahoo Answers, lots of question sites and comes up with all the questions around that topic. I typed in curiosity for you and give you a little taste of that. But then I want you to go to answer the public as well. Type that in your little notes there because answer the public is mind blowing and it uses Google and Bing results like results like curiosity. It tells you why uh, curiosity, why is it fun? Why is curiosity dangerous? Why does it, curiosity matter? I think, and I beg you to use Answer the Public and Questions Analyzer on your constant curiosity mission when you're trying to, hey, here's a challenge. Why don't you type ISD in there uh, and see what that comes up with? Because you might, you might be making a decision to do the Masters in Internet Business. Just, I'm right here in the office. Uh, see what it comes up with. Um, I bet it won't come up with pictures of this amazing downstairs because that's fresh, off, hot off the press. So I want you to really think, don't just do the same thing because I don't want you to end up being a pecker. This pecker, what was he trying to prove? He just kept pecking, pecking, pecking down the same path. I want you to do, go down a different path like my hero, not really, but at least old dude in advertising, we'll call him Ben, old dude in advertising who created DDB, He's, the, he's one of these, the one of the B, D, B, he is the B in DDB. Bill Bernbach says, he said, is the global audience, the only thing you got is creativity. It's the last unfair advantage. And I think, guys, I want you to, I want, I want to challenge you to be imaginative and to fight fear and remember the one thing, if you, again, one thing I'd love to remember is, no idea is a bad idea because the one thing that happened in culture is the next time you're afraid to share ideas, remember someone in a meeting in Hollywood said, let's make a film with tornadoes full of sharks. Whatever idea you come up with will be better than that one, and that one's a massive success. So go out there, be fearless with your imagination. Ask questions first, then imagination, and know also that you will never be worse than this commercial for Pepsi. We are the movement. Tell me by raise of hands or raise of your balls whether you've seen this. I bet you have. I can't, I can't, Ben Rock, I cannot play this anymore. This is too painful. I'm just gonna talk about it. Okay, I'm gonna talk about it. Guys, this was a Pepsi ad if you hadn't seen it. Uh, it was basically made in a focus group full of cliches. I created a drinking game for the Can Lions Festival. I'm a, an MC and had my own happy hour show there. Um, and um, the you can see that, read that on the screen. But we got we got to stop people from doing stuff like this. And with quiet, with questions, imagination, empathy, and trust, we can do that because these are the most empathetic companies in the world. And I want to talk. I'm going to talk about some of them. Not surprising that technology leads. Facebook uh, is 
is like your life, a lot of you. Um, Google uh, helps you uh, find stuff. LinkedIn connects you to your business world. Uh, Netflix is what you're actually thinking about doing, switching me off and going uh, to a Netflix series, which I'm all right with. I'm dealing with that guilt. Um, but this, these are the most empathetic companies in the world. These are the ones I've studied. When I do a longer workshop, I bring in a lot more examples. I want you to say, I want you to look at them. I want the companies that you're going to work for, I want you to say, can I look at the people I'm trying to reach and can I plot them on this empathy map? Do I know what they're thinking and feeling, hearing, seeing, saying, and doing? And then after I get all that out, just like a brain dump onto the, my paper, can I then lis listen and think of the pains that these people have and what they're actually trying to achieve, the gains. Empathy maps, great place to start. Google it, they might have a better one. My, my good friend Ann Hanley said, you know, with all your constant curiosity stuff, John, if you just said, what would content look like if, if your client's customers sign the check, it would change things. And that's what this empathy thing is all about. And the final step in quiet is trust. Andy Cressadina, lovely man from Chicago, Orbit Media. When you say it's when you say it, it's marketing. When your customer says it, it's social proof. And uh, the reality is, just he he further goes on to say, you know, if I get Ben Rock here, if I write on your LinkedIn, if I get you to do a video like you're doing now and put it on my LinkedIn. Isn't that going to be better than, than me putting on my LinkedIn how amazing I am in text? So you in text is weak, but Ben Rock, one of my, we'll call him a customer for now, he's a mate, but anyway, a customer in a video is a strong, it's the future, and I want you to say, I want to know, and I want you to know what empathy looks like without trust. If you've got people and you've suckered them in, not suckered them in, if you've got them in this world where they're like, wow, I'm, you're really, really kind of on it here, I'm, I get you, I like you, um, I, I want an iPod, I want a thousand songs in my pocket, I love you Apple, then if you haven't created the trust, it's like being in a VR experience and the minder doing something evil like that. Who in their right mind would push someone when they're in an interactive, immersive VR experience? Uh, it leads to mayhem which I don't, if anything, I want you not to get into, your, uh, into a situation like that. And the only way you can do that is by the three C's of content strategy. And yes, the first is currency, then consistency, then connection. Those are my three C's and I rifle through them because the first one is Rihanna. She wore a see-through dress to an award show and Peter Griffin, yep, Ben Rock, that's right. Peter Griffin was wearing the same dress within an hour. She changed her avatar to Peter Griffin, kept it for uh, nine months. That's currency, but that's not good enough. That's the first C that you need to have when you're dealing, creating a content strategy for your brand. The second one is connection. Um, if you would create, it, you know, the connection you feel being in a crowd at the World Cup, like this, this created so much of an emotional connection with German fans. Germany was beating Brazil seven to one in the World Cup. I could not even watch this, it was so painful. Yes, I will admit it, I was cheering for Brazil, the host nation, and then this happened. Yeah, harsh, 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 harsh. Um, but again, went viral. You, uh, Ben Rock and I could have made this here live and is the offices for a penny and a half. And uh, this is the kind of thing that I get so excited. Yes, they had a big audience for the World Cup. I couldn't watch what was on the screen on my telly, so I was just on Twitter, and I saw that in real time. That creates an emotional connection, but that's not good enough if you don't keep doing it. One of my consultant friends, Mark Schaefer, has challenged me to do a, a vlog, like a to-camera kind of situation, once a week to be consistent to my audience, and I'm taking that on. Uh, you've got to be consistent. Like KLM are one of the best at social media, at, at, at customer service on social. They update their Twitter page saying, hey, man, every 37 seconds, every 37 minutes, we're, we're helping people. That's how long it's taken uh, us, and we update this every five minutes because we care. And then also, obviously, you, you could use dogs because people love dogs, but that's not the final C. Again, it's connection, 
consistency and currency, and that led to a massive, you know, 300, 400 times uh, their normal um, uh, revenues with KLM just listening, having their 256 people. Um, and I was, ch as I was chatting with Ben Rock later on uh, earlier today, not only do they have 256 real live people creating connection, consistency, and currency, they got chatbots dealing with the more mundane stuff, saying, okay, you're an idiot like me, I, I went to the wrong terminal at Heathrow today. Um, I could have just talked to my Facebook chatbot for, for British Airways and said, uh, what flight, uh, what terminal does BA fly to Madrid on instead of going to the wrong one? And I, I didn't need to talk to a human there. So again, connection consisting of current concurrency with a dash of technology ain't a bad thing. Now, okay. I'm getting going. Um, in a longer session, I could cover this further, but after we go on and make our constant curiosity content, I have to check in with you. I'm sorry that I don't trust you because I want you to look at your content now and I want you to say, is that thing that we made, Ben Rock, is that thing brave? Is it taking risks? Is it actionable getting people to do something? I'm going to talk to you as well. Um, is it likable? Does it make me like the brand, uh, like the Canadian beer machine? I love the Canadian embassy because the beer uh, fridge is all over the European continent. Is it long lasting? Am I going to remember it forever like the US not qualifying for the World Cup or am I going to forget it next week? Is it surprising? Does it throw like a brick in the window? Does it do something different? And finally, is it based on you, the customer, not me, 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 the brand saying, buy Coke, buy Coke, buy Coke, buy Coke. Well, it's like, no, I don't want you to get out of my face. So again, it's now your turn. First annual is the constant curiosity battle. We're going to rifle through this in the interest of time. Adidas versus Nike. Um, are you going to go with that? Are you going to go with GoPro versus Red Bull? Or are you going to go with Microsoft versus Apple? The reality is you are a sitting duck because you can't even tell me what you're going to go for. So I picked one for you. And the one I picked is Red Bull. So the constant curiosity conversation with Red Bull is as follows. I used to work for them. They're a lovely brand. They're the first ever brand to think like publishers. But in the case of Leipzig, a football team in Austria, they changed the name to RB Leipzig and the fans did not like that overt sponsorship and they let the brand know. So that they got questions uh, and it, it basically was like a lead balloon, that particular example. Red Bull are great, but in this example I'm focusing on, it was a little bit tone deaf to the crazy Austrian fans existing fans of Leipzig who didn't want to be called essentially Red Bull Leipzig and they let everyone know it. So, you know, GoPro on the other hand do videos and every video they put out every day is based on a fan's thing, uh, their experience using the camera because GoPro is nothing without the fans. The customer is the hero like this umbrella skydive which happens to be my favorite GoPro execution. Now we need Ben Rock to go to the scorecard. If you're keeping score at home, because we only have 14 minutes left, if you're keeping score at home, I want you to know that the brand and the format matter, just like what Crestadina said, um, the video is stronger than a sponsorship platform that falls on deaf, angry Austrian fans. So I'm putting GoPro stronger than Red Bull in these two examples on my scorecard. I would love for you to keep score at home with examples you found going brand plus format strong and weak, but I got to say I'm getting excited because I get to talk to you about my favorite, yep, Ben Rock, that's right, my favorite execution in the last five years in the world of sport and sorry to pick on you Austrians because I'm going back to Austria for some rink bingo. Oh my goodness. Rink bingo. Raise your hand. Throw a ball at me if you've heard of it. Probably not. The reason Rink bingo is the platform that absolutely crushes it is because they said, what is our problem? We started with questions. Why do our fans, uh, we're the best in the league in hockey in Austria, but our fans shuffle in, shuffle out just like British soccer fans. 
uh, looking miserable. How do we get them to stay? Well, what do people want? People want free stuff. How can we just randomly give them free swag, free beer? No, we need to create a reason, a fun way of doing it that's imaginative. There you go, questions, imagination. But how do we create empathy with our fans? So what they did, wait for it, is how do you hold the discount promotions in a fun way? They put technology around the rink. Yeah, see that little rink thing? They put a sensor in every smash board, crash board, rink panel in the hockey, and every time a hockey player crashed against that, it was a number went off on your phone because you had an app. It was a bingo app. And if you got them all in a straight line, you won free two for ones. This has been the most successful promotion ever and people hung around. They had to do it uh, a lot. And it, it, again, it got, it got my attention. It was constant curiosity to a T. Sorry, Red Bull. Sorry, GoPro. But you have been upstaged by Rink Bingo and an Austrian random hockey club. Um, so what we got now is, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to have to quickly show you. This is what it feels like when you're not listening, when you're just doing what you want to do, saying, I'm going to change the name of my Austrian uh, soccer team. It hurts. This was gift of the year. Some NFL folks getting plowed down by a golf cart out of control. Um, and then this is indeed what it feels like when you just blame the tools. Some lady genuinely, I know you don't get, a lot of you don't get baseball, but she genuinely thought, oh, look, there's a fly ball. Look, look, Ben Rock. There's a fly ball. I'll catch the fly ball with my plate o nachos and beer. Don't blame it on the tools, lady. You're the tool. A lot of us blame our social media hootsuite dashboards and, oh, we didn't know that we shouldn't have scheduled tweets when people were dying at the Boston Marathon for celebrating the lusciousness of a cranberry scone. Well, don't blame it on the tools. You're the tool, lady. And if we get it right, it can be subtle, sweet, transformative love like this guy that just said, I'm going to get my girl. I am going to use the power of an escalator to uh, slide over and give me a moment. Your moves are so raw. I want to let you know you're one of my kind. Uh, and I can't play that for you because we don't have the rights to in excess. And that proves that I'm an old fart quoting in excess. So our, it all goes back. I'm going to relax now because we're on the home stretch. It all goes back to are you solving a prob problem or are you meeting a need? Now, I've, I've pied a thousand songs in your pocket. Steve Jobs didn't even know, you didn't even know that was a problem until he gave you the solution in the same way that Lego did the same thing with, with uh, the, basically the stories they allow you to tell. I, I got my, I'm going to try, if any of you create constant curiosity content, I am mailing this to Mexico, to Spain, to Austria, hopefully not to Brazil. What country have I made fun of the most? Anyway, wherever you are, um, I want to know, we buy Lego for the stories that it can tell. I got to work with, uh, with Lego tangentially with a client called Sugru. Someone from called Manuel sent this photo in. Sugru is this pla is this little silly putty thing uh, that helps you. It's a DIY product. We uh, the client got them to actually do another photo of of the little uh, their little silly putty, and they figured out this man Manuel figured out that the hand of the Lego figure fit a lightning cable. By far their most viral execution, and again we were just able to help them focus on technology brands uh, and solve problems like Joanne's problem. She has four, she's missing some fingers, four of them in fact, and uh, using this plastic moldable glue sucre that hardens in 24 hours, she was able to adapt her oar and then win a 714 kilometer race because she found out that sucre was indispensable to her life. I want you to ask yourself, maybe you're thinking about taking an ISD course, the MIB, maybe not, but I want you to ask yourself, are there any brands out there right now that are indispensable? If they were going to die, I don't have my Nerf guns with me right now, but if they were going to die a death and not be around, would you even care? That is our challenge, ladies and gentlemen, to find ways to help brands be indispensable to other people's lives. I got six steps. Listen up to me, Ben Rock. 
consider your brand positioning. Where are you standing in the market? What, what do people think of you? Think about the core values of your company. Um, that's the just starting block. You haven't even gotten in the race yet there. Keep in mind the why and who you're telling your story to. That gets into our empathy thing. We're getting walking in the Nike running shoes of our fans. Make sure your story is shareable, uh, and I think a shareable story will have this formula. It will, it will have the ballsy, but it will start off with something you've questioned, something you've applied imagination, empathy, and trust to. It will involve your customers actually in the story, and you will have to be consistent and authentic in your approach. Now, final tips before we get to our rocket five minute round of questions. I'm sorry there's only five, but I'm very excited. If you got any, I got final tips to get and keep your attention. Get ready for this. Like I said, you got to plan slow to create quick. This is about the ready, fire, aim, just like Ben Rock's been firing at me this whole time. You got to plan slow to make it look like you've created quick. And then you got to find some tech to help you be quick sometimes, like this app that was created for me called Okie Doki that allows me to look at Seattle and Dallas fans uh, for a major league soccer game and say, uh, here are these 150 fans have created content for me, the brand, uh, whether it's Dallas or Seattle, either one, uh, and then I can pick the content in real time. Tech will help you. Uh, but I, again, human beings, like we like fun, we like beer fridges with Canadian pa passports. You gotta put fun first. You gotta find your story and tell it in your in your own way, and again, sorry, another Lego, Lego reference. I, you are so incredibly selfish, and so am I. We are all, you know. I tried to tell, I tell my wife this when she's worrying about something. I'm like, listen, they are just thinking of themselves. If you really think about that and let it sink in, it will really help us as marketers pe appeal to people's self-obsession, and that's not just selfie obsession, that's self-obsession in general. And again, creativity is about mixing, matching, putting, putting, you know, like the imagination thing where I was like finding new possibilities and new ideas. Think like a DJ, think like BuzzFeed, adopt a distribution mindset. Sometimes you gotta start with the channel. Oh my goodness, sometimes it's like, we gotta do this for Pinterest, because we have, um, this demographic buying stuff off Pinterest uh, to, to, for their wedding or for, to decorate their house or whatever, we gotta nail that platform. We're creating content for Pinterest. And then finally, like I said in the very beginning about the fact that we are doing brains over Coca-Cola budgets, you gotta repurpose wildly. What if a focus group said, oh my goodness, Rocky is too aggressive, well, in the power of technology, I'm going to change this aggressive movie poster into absolute, pure, unadulterated love with the power of a hand on Ben Rock's face. A hand right here on Ben Rock's face. That changes everything. Ladies and gentlemen, give gifts. Do it. People are only thinking of themselves. Appeal to that. Give gifts. Turn it into a game show if you have to. Um, and you know what? This game show could even be an event on a web series like, like Ben Rock and I are doing. Now, my last final shot for you is I would love to look at your tweets later and I want to know that I get to send this Lego bus to somewhere around the world. I help people solve problems with Lego, having been trained in Lego series play. I'd love to chat with you about that later, but I would be an idiot if I didn't say all this stuff spouting from my mouth for 56 minutes now, I've been inspired by these people. Could you read their books? I beg you. Uh, Joe Polizzi, uh, Jonah Berger, Contagious, Made to Stick, Chip and Dan Heath, Ben Park, Captivology, about getting people's attention, and my two friends who I'm hoping to bring over to this part of the world, Mark Schaefer and Ann Handley. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Let's go for some Q&As, and I want you to type them in Yep, to the question section of the go to webinar control panel. Like literally, I got I got four, but I, I want I want to know that those of you who have remained with me for 57 long arduous minutes, 
that you got some questions. These questions could be about anything. They could be about how do I start. I deal with boring brands, John. You just focused on fun brands. I deal with B2B brands around machinery for airplane parts. Can you apply this to B2B? It could be practical tips, operational tips, whatever. I got three minutes and I'd love to handle some questions and maybe I might, if I got no other content coming out in the Twitter and Instagram, which does happen because you people are tired and or busy at lunch, uh, maybe maybe some questions, maybe some Lego goes to some questions. If I have some mind-blowing questions, some Lego bus action could actually wheel toward you right now. Come on now. Is the, I got I got a, a live audience. I see a lot of you out there in my mind. What, what is one question that I can answer for you in the next two minutes? I would freaking love that. Ben Rock, would you not love a question? Yeah, for sure. Mm. While we're waiting for them to come in, do you or my live studio audience have any questions? Um, yes. Think about it. But let me think about it. Mm, think of like is there a way to refresh this to make sure, or does it come up automatically? I just, I'm just, I just want to make sure if um, oh, you just have to scroll down until the end. Oh gosh, that's it, guys. I'm scrolling down. That was it, guys. I knew there was something wrong. I wasn't scrolling down. So, um, uh, um, Deanna Monroy says, a tip, any tips about the automotive industry? By the way, sorry if some of you um, have, I didn't see that I could scroll down. Um, so a tip on the automotive industry is, oh my goodness, gearheads are crazy. Um, there's this thing that I've uh, been, people I've been chatting with, uh, Jeremy Clarkson in the UK, uh, called Drive Tribe. Uh, if anything, everything I've said towards sports and entertainment applies to automotive people because of the passion of, of, of their little tribe. If you have a group like that, you have to appeal to, you have to ask questions about what they want. They will have so many specific things in their heads of, of why they like BW over BMW over, I've done stuff with BMW and Mini, and even though that's the same brand, I had to treat BMW and Mini totally differently because of the tribes. Uh, so it, it, you you gotta if anything with automotive you gotta start with empathy you gotta know your tribe first so quiet turns upside down for automotive how would you start with a psychology brand focused not only on people's problems but on how people feel strong people have to go to therapy so how would you start with a psychology brand um, well uh, that's that's a tricky one uh, the reality is if it's a psychology brand Everything we do in trying to create empathy is about psychology. Uh, it's about getting under the skin of people and being able to walk in their shoes. So I feel that that um, you've got to, again, start with empathy. Uh, you're going to have to be the best therapist in the world. Um, and i got two more questions. Uh, I'm going to – interested in – okay. Oh, wow. Um, Okay. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. Oh, wow. I just love you. So we got Susana Moreno Arroyo, and uh, you were interested, Susana, Susana, Susanna, maybe we'll say, uh, in knowing more about Lego Serious Play. I'm going to send you some links to that, uh, but I'm going to just give you a little demo of that. So if I ripped open your box um, of Lego, uh, what I would do is say, okay, I want to create um, a... Uh, a community, just to answer um, our other friends, uh, Di Diana's question, I want to create a community of car lovers um, to help get, help achieve this na national, international problem with the VW emissions crisis thing when they were being naughty. So uh, I get people to create their world um, of a world where VW could Re recover from that, and I would get them with their hands to express that using metaphors, um, and be able to. And, and then I have loads of tips on how uh, how we can actually action uh, those metaphors that they that they bring up. And it's amazing when the tactile nature of feeling something, explaining something in your hands, it appeals to the kinesthetic sense 
and, uh, and honestly, it has to be experienced. So you have to see it to believe it because it sounds like some getting paid to have fun, and it's actually deeper than that. Susanna, I love you for asking that question, and I got time for one more. I'm going to scroll down. Um, Oh, oh, um, oh, thank you, Vincent. Um, I just answered your question as well. You want to know about LEGO Series Play as well. Man, I'd love to chat with you guys personally on my email, which is located on every slide. Um, so Vincent, Susanna, get in touch. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, ah, Alvaro, you are the final question as we wrap this bad boy up. You have just said, how do you deal with a client dealing with social media who's always interested in buying followers to grow fast, a false mass of followers? How can you make them understand that this is not the way, not only for legal, but also for being trusted? Okay, the, the, the best way to do this is by uh, looking at, um, I have to be honest with you, technology is such now that it spots the fakes and uh, you know, influencers, you know, influencers are not even being called up by anyone because people know that they're fake followers. I think technology is 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 coming to a point where we can spot out the fakes and we just ignore them because the reality is quiet to ask questions to come up with an imaginative solution for the best ones of those questions to think about who your fans are and to develop this trust. If you if you do your questions, your imagination, your empathy, you will build trust, but you've got to start with a level playing field if we're going to be honest and do what our fans want. We, that's the only way to be constantly curious. Alvaro, thank you so much. Thank you, Izzy. Thank you for all of you who hung around. Um, I am very grateful for your attention. I try to get it, and I try to keep it. I also know that my partners, Izzy, um, are great at kind of taking this baton that I've started off and helping answer some of your questions around if you want to do this with a master's in internet business. I'm pumped about these guys. I'm not doing a hard sell because that would be against all of my own quiet principles. But um, I, I really appreciate your attention. Thank you so much. Go grab a beer if you're in Europe um, on me and um, a coffee if you're in Mexico or somewhere else because you shouldn't be drinking while on work time. Again, keep your constant curiosity going. This is my man, Ben Rock. Uh, Hi guys. Ricardo and the guys from ISD have been amazing. Thank you so much. It's five minutes over. Enjoy yourself. Keep it ballsy. Keep and stay and get attention through constant curiosity. Um, I will talk to you later. Thank you very much. Was that sorry?